Hello, welcome again. This is uh, another short chromatic video and I'm going to show you the basics of the interface, how to select colours, how to zoom, how to pan, how to get photos in and out and a little bit about some of the settings. Um, there's a lot more to come. There's all the different display modes and all the colour uh, color pieces. So um, this is just to get people started. It should really be obvious, I think, a lot of it. Um, I've tried to make it as intuitive as possible, um, but there may be a couple of things in there that are, you know, maybe slightly hidden. So let's get going. On to Canvas Cam. Right, so I've got Chrome Magic loaded up, uh, balanced on my trusty Altoids tin, because I've got my drawing board at a slight angle. I, I use this for watercolour mostly. And this starts with, uh, this is my lovely parrot painting. But we're going to get rid of that and load up a reference photo. So loading up files. OK, so the universal icon for loading is this nice blue plus down the bottom. And if you click that, I'm using an iPad, by the way. Um, it works exactly the same on um, iPhones. It's just that where is my iPhone? It's just that you know, it's just a little bit small for the screen. So I, I, I use my iPad so uh, you can see a bit better. But the interface is the same. So you can load in photos from your photo library. You can use the camera uh, to take a photo. Uh, the first time you use that, it'll ask you for permission because we have to do that as uh, as app developers. Or you can choose a file from files that are you know in your uh, Google Drive or whatever external um, cloud file software you have. But I'm going to load in from a photo library. To be honest, I mostly use the photo library. I'm going to load in this nice rose reference. And there he goes. And he's in. And I'm going to concentrate on this top piece here. Um, I know we've got this lovely colour chart. And there's a lot of stuff in there, there that's really nice. And that's when I'm actually using it is where I, I kind of live. But let's go through this piece and this little colour swatch um, split rectangle down here first. So we have our photo and uh, when it loads it up, it loads it up as full screen as it can get. But obviously the aspect ratio will vary depending on photo. And you can always see the whole uh, uh, overview photo up in the top left. And this red rectangle shows you which bit is actually visible in the zoomed in piece. And if you want to see different bits of the photo, uh, you can put your finger away from the crosshairs, just drag it around. You can zoom in and out the usual way, just with pinching. And if you get annoyed with the overview, sometimes I just want to turn it off. You can change this in the settings and the settings icon is up here at the top right, the little gear icon. Just unclick that and the overview will go away. And then you can put him back on again if you want. I'll put him back on again for now. Okay, so other things you can do, let's so you can zoom in and out, which is nice if you just want to hone in on, on a, a small piece. And to show the colours, just tap anywhere on the photo. So let's, I'm dragging it around. Let's do this light piece up here. And whatever colour is underneath those crosshairs will appear in this bottom triangle. It says image. So this is image colour down here. And the magic part is this piece here where Chroma Magic goes and finds the closest swatch it can. And that's this top triangle here. They're usually pretty close. They're not going to be exactly close because this is not a continuum. You know, these are discrete chips, but they're usually pretty close. I'll just say a little bit about this piece and it shows you the hue, which is like the name of the color, like red, orange, yellow, green, etc. And we can see this. It's kind of a, a red, slightly kind of orangey red. But it also shows you the value and the value goes from very dark up to very light. 10 is white, 0 is black, so it goes actually on the screen 1 to 9. And the other thing that shows you, which is really, really nice, is the chroma. So out here, 
is high chroma and by chroma I mean it's very intense color this is kind of out of the tube type color very intense very saturated and then as we go back and these are all the same value it goes back to very low chroma very gray very subtle nuanced color and these are all the same value, which can be hard to see if I click on this. So this is the most saturated color. And it's a value five. There's this number here. Don't worry about all the numbers. Not for now. I don't think you actually need many of the numbers. And you come all the way back. And this one is also a red. It's also the same value. And it's that kind of color. It's very dusky pink. And these low chroma colors, we use uh, a lot more than you might think. So let's just click around here and, and let's have a look at some of the colors. Actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna show you the crosshairs. Now you probably can't see that right now. Let's just zoom in a bit more. Yeah, there's a little square in there and that is the area over which it averages the color. And if you have a very busy photo, you might, you know, the color is going to vary a lot as you move the cursor. So we can increase the uh, area that it averages over. Back to the settings. Pixel sample size, it's actually five at the moment. Let's take it up to 50, up to 50 take. Yeah, so that's a lot bigger and you'll get a, a, a less variable color. And if I'm just looking at a photo and just trying to see how the colors vary, that's why I will often use that size. So there we go. So let's have a quick, quick talk about this color. So we have, um, it's a very light pink and it kind of is, but it's a very, actually the hue is actually quite an orangey red. It's very light, so it's up here on the value nine. But the other thing is it's very, very low chroma. Almost back to a, a, a gray here. If I click on this, let me click on, let me click on the months or. So this is a value nine gray. When you bring up a swatch, you'll always have a gray at the bottom. And this is the actual color. I mean, on the screen, yes, I can quite just about see the difference in color. It may not seem very much to you, but that will have a huge effect on your painting. We might think, well, we'll just paint it gray and it'll be fine. No. We have to have a little bit of color in it and and oppositely you might think well it's a light pink i'll just i'll just make it lighter and say up here that's the same value it's a like much higher chroma and if we start painting our petals that color they'll look a bit garish so chroma is one thing you always have to always have to watch out for so that's in the light let's have a click around and see see what's going on let's have a look in this shadow this very very deep deep shadow in here. I just click on it and I can move this cursor around. If I put my finger just close to it, I can just move it around, which can be really useful, especially if I'm wanting to see how the color varies from light to shadow. I can just put my finger on it and move it up and down and I can see that color vary. But let's just leave it there for now. So as we've gone into the shadow, I think this is actually quite surprising. It's, it's actually gone slightly more towards orange. This is now a big orange out here. This was slightly redder. You see that, that color change? It's come down in value, which is what we'd expect. It's in shadow. Definitely expect that. But the chroma has gone up right to here. Out in, the, out in the light, we were over here, very low chroma, almost gray. And then down in the shadow, it's very high chroma. I'll just bring up that swatch and show you that color. Very intense color. It can be quite tricky to reach. And that's one of the things that really brings these, these flowers to life is that really rich shadow color in there. So that's a little bit about selecting colors. Let me just show you a little bit more about uh, how we can manipulate the interface. Say we were zooming in very, very far. Just maybe there was a little highlight here we wanted to look at and we wanted to just see what that color was. You can get back to the whole photo by using one of these two little rectangles. There's a landscape one and then there's a portrait one. So the landscape one, if I click on it, 
it'll fill the screen with the photo to the full width. I zoom in again. So, and the portrait one will fill the screen to the full height of the photo. So you can fill the screen either with full width or the full height. So I do that, that's the full height of the photo. You'll get a bit of gray on the, on the outside because yeah, this photo is obviously a bit squarer than my screen. Another thing about the um, navigating the interface is, say we are on this photo and we want to look at something, I don't know, over here, say, this little dusky rose bud over here, and then we want to zoom in. I mean, we can just use fingers. Fingers usually work pretty well, but you kind of have to, oh, you see, I'm just demonstrating why it's a bit, a bit awkward. Um, you can just pinch and drag, but you can also center the screen with this bottom icon here and then zoom in and it's a lot easier to keep this in place. And I can remember, you can always drag the screen around. Having your finger just away from the crosshairs, you can drag the screen around and then when it's near the crosshairs, you can move this around like so. Another couple of things while we are, oh, actually, I'll uh, let's re full screen it using one of the clever buttons. I've shown you, you know, you've probably seen this a little bit before, and if you watch some of the calibration um, videos, you've also seen this. Once you select a color and it's here, you can click either one of these swatches and bring up a bigger swatch of that color. And if you've calibrated your um, screen, you'll be able to match exactly to this this colour on your screen. Um, if you watch the iPhone calibration uh, video, I do a lot of tests of the, all all around the wheel and checking all the colours match up, and they do. Works really really well. And additionally, in here, if you just want to say, I mean, this is the one that's selected. If you select a color, it's selected with this, this red outline, but all of these are clickable. And so if you want to see what does this look like at a lower value, just click it, tap the swatch that comes up and you get a bigger, a bigger, um, a bigger swatch. Okay. So that's pretty much it just for navigating around. You can turn on and off the overview panel. You can zoom in and out. You can pan. You can change the uh, pixel sample size. You can recenter it and you can fit it to the width or the height of the screen. There's a couple more things in the settings I would like to show you right now. Uh, let's go back into the settings. So we've done the pixel sample size. I'll just leave this. I actually don't change this an awful lot. And this will be um, in another video. Uh, we've done the overview of image, turning that on and off. Um, load most recent image. Uh, when you first load up Homer Magic, it will show you the parrot um, picture. And uh, every if you load up your own photo, every subsequent time you open it, it will open up the last, uh, the most recent image that you've loaded in. If you want to turn that off for whatever reason, um, just unclick that and that won't happen. But the main thing I want to show you is this show paint links option. If I put that on, here we go. Wow. So now all of our colors down here, some of them have little dots in and some of them are outside as well, which I'll talk about in a minute. And these are all colors that have a match to uh, an oil paint tube that you can buy. And behind Chromamagic, there's a database of about, hmm, oh, I don't know, 500 paints. Some of the manufacturers are giving out muscle notation for paints these days, so I've collated all those and put links into them from here. So if I click on one, let's, let's do this nice bright one. Right, so it will tell you, whoops, this swatch of colour is Gamblin Cadmium Orange Deep. And if I click on it again, you'll actually get a link. Now this goes to Dick Blick. Uh, here we go. And it will show you the paint 
and you can buy it from there. I don't get any kickbacks from this at all. Um, I just chose Dick Blick because it's actually quite hard to get direct links. I wanted to go back to the manufacturer's pages, but a lot of the manufacturers, you can do just go to a, a generic page. But I wanted to show each individual colour. And so you can go back to each, um, each paint. Okay. Now, you note that some of these dots are outside our charts. And this is because the range of colours you can get on this screen is actually, or the range of chrome is actually, is actually not quite as much as you can get in paint. So some of these are just outside. Let's click on those. Outside the range I can display. Let's redo Cadmium Red Vermilion. Let's have a look at that one and see what that one looks like. But again, if you go to the web page, it will show you exactly what it is. And it's not that you want to go and just buy every tube of paint that, you know, say you wanted to mix this colour, you're not going to go and buy that, that tube of paint. But I sometimes, if I'm on a, on, a, on a chart, I'll click around just to see the names of the paint colours. So Cad Red Vermilion, Cad Red Light. So I know that if I'm on this chart, Cad Red Light is, is maybe a good place to start. For, for mixing and down here is probably some it's gonna say some burnt siennas in here red ochre in your red gambling burnt sienna is down here yeah so cad red light um burnt sienna they're the kind of paints that we you would use to be on that page i generally keep these turned off um because if i'm moving my cursor around they get a bit distracting Okay, so that's the main interface. Um, I think I've covered everything I wanted to. Um, I, as I said at the beginning, uh, I'll just put it back on me. As I said at the beginning, I think it's fairly intuitive. Um, the only thing that is not right there that you have to change is the pixel sample size on your cursor. But if you go into the settings, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward what's there. Okay, well, thank you for watching. I hope again it was useful and um, there will be more videos in the coming days. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.